that are, we, you know, we've learned a lot about that, like not letting our guard down and not posting every time we go somewhere, we're doing something and um, just being safe. I mean, I was in the military. So for me, safety is paramount. And I, um, so yeah, so I saw that and it was tough, but fortunately, you know, they're, they've been able to move forward and keep it moving, you know? It is scary. Like, right. Like Beverly Hills, like I know Kyle and Dorit and like, it's just, it's scary that you don't think like we all post things where we are and it's not good. And it's tough. You don't even, you know, and it's, and you know, you just look at the world right now and it's just so much like it's just I don't know are you in LA I'm in New York City so okay you're in oh my god so yeah it's it's never stopped for you right you always have to like check around your shoulder you feel safe like well I mean I'm in the Hamptons for the whole summer but like when you're in your house in New York you feel safe because you have a dorm sorry I didn't mean it like that. Let's but, be clear. I'm in the Hamptons. I'm thinking. <laughs> no, but because no, but because of that, I mean, it's different. Nothing's really happening out here, but I'm used to a doorman and that you're not, but it is true. Like when you're in a house, you're like, this is a whole, so it does. And I have friends in LA and I know what's going on in LA. And I mean, a lot of Atlanta too, which it is scary. It's so tough. I mean, I, when I first moved to Atlanta, I actually lived in a neighborhood that was kind of on a border of two different cities. And so who are, I guess, is it more counties or I think it's more, maybe it's more counties. Who, what police would come if there was a home invasion? We were right in that border where we were at a farther police department. And so the, you know, the bad guys knew that. And so in our neighborhood, there was someone kicking in doors and breaking in because they knew they had 13 minutes before a police officer would come. 13 minutes. And that kind of stuff was scary because when I tell you it, it, the whole neighborhood pretty much had a for sale sign up like a year later, it was a brand new neighborhood because of that. And that's, it just really just as hard as you're working to be good. Sometimes people working equally hard to be bad. And and it was just nuts. It was so scary. And I'm talking, we're talking eight o'clock in the morning, seven 30 in the morning. As soon as people would go off to work, their alarm would go off and someone would break in. And they would just have trucks because they had all that, they had that much time. So Atlanta is, um, I don't want to scare anybody and make them think Atlanta is scary because it's not, but it is, you do have to have situational awareness. It's a big city. It's a super busy city. And right now people are living in poverty and they're suffering because of COVID and financially and, and people have taken drastic measures because of that. So it's scary. Yeah, Yeah, it is. As we wind down, no, it really is scary. As we wind down that last few questions, do you know any of the Real Housewives of Atlanta just being in Atlanta? I mean, are you, do, do you watch? I mean, the, this current For season sure. is on. Yeah, so the crazy thing is, I mean, I actually, my neighborhood, like Sheree and Kenya, um, and look, Phaedra doesn't, she's not on that one anymore, but we all are neighbors. So they're right around the corner for me. Um, of course, Cynthia, like who doesn't know Cynthia? Everyone knows her. Drew, no Drew. Um, Marlo, I mean, how can you not know Marlo? So yeah, and the only person I don't know, I've met her before, and of course, Candy, but I've met Sonia. Um, and I have always admired her career as an athlete and as a champion. So I'm just super impressed. I just think Atlanta in particular is full of black excellence. And it just makes me so proud to be here. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, which is also an amazing city. But when I got here and it was just like, oh wait, this is what you do and this is where you live. It was just mind blowing, you know, the level of success and and wealth that was here. And I just am very happy to be a part of it because my children look at that and they think, you know, being successful is normal. And I love that. I love that. I love that. And I'm hoping and praying they aspire to it because they're getting the heck up. They're getting up out of here at 18. I just want them to know my foot is in their back. They can't live here forever. (laughs) I I think that's good. My parents were like, okay, here you go. And now, you know, go to school and that's it. You're not coming back. I think that's good. I think it's, it makes you successful. So I kind of agree with that. Yeah, for sure. So if you run out of like toilet paper or butter, or you need like something, who are you going to go to? You're going to go to Sheree. You're going to go to Kenya. If these are your neighbors. <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> so the problem with these houses around here is there's these big yards and big gates. <laughs> so they will, if I went to them, I would say, you know, they would be like the closest person in proximity to me is actually Phaedra. Like she's like houses away from me. But, um, but yeah, there's, I would, if I've name drops, you know, 
like some people who live around here, I swear to goodness, like there are some big, big stars that live in my neighborhood. I'm the lowest man on the totem pole. I'm just a regular old doctor, <laughs> you know, but it's kind of cool. It's like that. We, I have so many people like you'll see them at the grocery store. Or you'll see them around. And it's so awesome. I just saw Phaedra at Costco like a couple of weeks ago. So <laughs> you got to love a run in with Phaedra. Yeah. So maybe she would be the one because we were at Costco. And so I know she has some. <laughs> She has plenty of toilet paper. <laughs> there you go. Finally, my last question, like, you know, how have you changed, you know, like you were on this show for five years, like, have you changed, like, not like in a negative way, just like, has this show changed you as a person? Like you're a doctor, you're in the military, you've been through so many things in your life that are not easy, medical school yeah. and the military, like, has this show changed you in any way? The only thing I would say, and I've even asked my friends this because it's very important for me not to change too much. I try to be, you know, I'm trying to be the same person I've been since I was like eight years old, you know, really like in a good way. And I'm still the same warm, personable person and down to earth, but I do pay attention now to the glam. Like I get, I don't go. I won't go on camera looking crazy or my, you know, I do my edges and I do my hair and, you know, I'm, I kind of do more self-care and pampering and I um, am more into like some of the, um, you know, the fluff stuff that I wasn't into in the past, you know, I'm pretty frugal in some ways. I mean, doesn't, I do have a Birkin, so it's not like <laughs> I'm completely frugal, but I mean, it's, I, I'm not like a big flaunter of like wealth. And now though, I've spent some time and money on myself and my appearance. And I used to think that was superficial. I mean, of course, being a doctor, being in the military, but now I just actually feel, you feel good when you look good and there's nothing wrong with that. And I've kind of gotten to that place and I'm happy about that. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm worth it. You are worth it. Listen, every, every girl deserves at least one Birkin, right? I mean, right. come on. I mean, I, Garcelle said no last. She said she wants one, but I was like, you know, I just wanted one. And Scott got, actually Scott got it for me, believe it or not. You know, he was listening. So. <laughs> See, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> yes. When, when Garcelle said that, I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? I know girls not, you know, I had to pop that cherry, like some things. And there are certain things like on the bucket list, like that was it. Like, I don't have a lot of Birkins. I don't have a lot of role, like not name dropping stuff, but I was like things that I just kind of was like, that was out of my like, right. You know, that, that was something I could not have. I needed to do that because it also, you know, like you have to be able to bless yourself when you, what are you working for if you're totally. not able to reward yourself a little bit? So I'm the same yeah. way. And <laughs> as we go and say goodbye, what is harder medical school, the military, or hanging out with these women for five years? Who for sure the military, for sure the military. The military actually trained me for this. Like, this is easy breezy, lemon squeezy in comparison. I mean, that if I wasn't in the military, I swear I would have fallen long ago. Uh, amongst these women, but they train me very well to be on a reality television show. <laughs> they train me for war and reality television, which is pretty analogous. <laughs> They're right, like neck and neck. <laughs> I was going to say that with this job, that doesn't shock me, you know, that the military would prepare you for this. Absolutely. Well, listen, it's going to be an amazing season of Married to Medicine. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of it so far. I cannot wait to watch the whole thing. Like, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. You have to come back next season. Like, I've really thoroughly enjoyed this chat. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Anytime. Don't work too hard. And thank you very much. And next time you go to the Hamptons, I need an invite. I have this. this <laughs> anytime you want. Okay. I'll be there tomorrow. See you later. <laughs> let, me, let me go prepare your room. Okay. And you're a doctor too. Like what better house guest do I want? I'm, 